Welcome to Bull TV, where we're bullish on Collierville. I'm your host, David Pickler. Bull TV is a monthly show that empowers, educates, and entertains by highlighting the citizens of Collierville and the Mid-South who inspire and deliver solutions for a stronger community. Bull TV is presented by Pickler Companies. It's proudly produced by the students at Collierville High School. We invite you to watch our show at www.bulltv.show, thebullnetwork.com, and CHS TV 19. New episodes air on the second Sunday of every month at 3 p.m. Central Time. On today's show, I sit down with longtime friend and inspiration, Diane Height, who founded Forever Young Veterans in 2006. Join us on this inspiring episode as we hear about Diane's mission to help end the silent suffering of older military veterans. In this show, we'll learn about why Forever Young honors our veterans through trips of honor and how they can help change the lives of our nation's heroes. Okay, so here's your time for commercial. <laughs> so uh, if someone wanted to buy a copy of the book, where would they find it? How would they find it? How much does it cost? It's on Amazon. Okay. Uh, it, for paperback, it's it's 15 and hard uh, cover is 23 Okay, very, very good. So Amazon.com, Forever Young Veterans, uh, with the Diane Height as the author, Michael, and Michael Ware, right? That's right. Mike <laughs> is the writer. He's uh, He does... He did a lot of the stories in there. Uh, he's excellent. Well, that's great. Well, and, uh, and the proceeds of the book go back to the foundation? Yes. It's just to help us honor our veterans and get them on our trips of honor and to do wishes for them. That is fantastic. You know, we haven't talked about this, but when you take a trip to, uh, to Washington, D.C., or to Hawaii or Normandy, um, obviously you've got to raise money for that. Yes. And uh, about how much does the cost take these trips, and where do you get your funding? Well, let me tell you, the, the cost has increased so much lately because, you know, with the food and the gasoline, and it's been quite shocking to us. Normally, a trip is about $1,500 to uh, Washington, D.C. Per person. Per person. And that includes everything, three meals a day, their airfare. But our, our trip of honor coordinator just sent us a, an email today going, oh, all the costs have been increased. <laughs> so I'm not sure how much it's going to be this time, but hopefully we can keep it around 1800 per person. They don't have to spend a dime. Right. Uh, we pay f for everything. It's all inclusive. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it shocks the vets. They say to me, I can't believe that people care enough to pay for this. They can't believe it. They would pay for me to do this. So uh, when we go to Hawaii, we went to Hawaii for the 80th anniversary, and it was a little bit less. I think because we were just coming out of the pandemic, and it was about 3,800. But usually it's more than that. Mm -hmm. It's usually about a thousand more. So it's it's about 4,500 somewhere in there normally. When we go to these, uh, to Normandy or to Europe, it's very expensive. It, it's usually about 5,500. Wow. It, it's a lot, especially it depends on how many nights you stay, of course, and mm -hmm. things like that. So where, what are your sources of funding? Well, we have a gala. That's where we get most of our funds for mm -hmm. the year. So we... We definitely need people to support our gala. And when is your gala this year? It's the last Saturday in August. Okay. There and you go. So uh, you can go to our website and find out all of the details. Yeah, this is the opportunity to get, get, get the word out here now, Diane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, go to our website and, and you can find out uh, about our gala. We get a lot of funds from memorials, birthdays of our veterans, 
a lot of the family members support us because they believe in what we're doing and some of the veterans they mm -hmm. they believe in what we're doing and, and they support us as well so um, we we have little fundraisers that we do here and there uh, but you can always go to the website and see what we're doing and what's your website address it's foreveryyoungvets.org okay very very good and that's v-e-t-s dot org perfect now what has been the most challenging aspect of your career so far? Well, normally <laughs> uh, a uh, nonprofit's going to say raising money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is a challenge for sure because people are going to support you for a while, mm -hmm. but they want to support other nonprofits too. So if you get someone to support you, they're not going to support you forever. Mm -hmm. And I understand that. I do the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll support one for a while, and then you go to someone else. So you have to always be finding new money. You have to always be looking for grants and things like that. So I think that is the most challenging. I had a passion. People who have a, a nonprofit, they have this passion. They don't realize they're going to be a fundraiser. <laughs> I did not realize I was going to be a fundraiser either. But the thing is, when you truly love, like I love the vets, I, I'm, I'm not a fundraiser kind of person, so it's not easy for me to mm -hmm. ask people for money. That's just not kind of the way I roll. But because I love my veterans so much, mm -hmm. it has really forced me to do things that I wouldn't normally do. Because you're not asking for you, you're asking That's for right. them. That's right, so I get out of my comfort zone <laughs> and uh, ask people to help us get these vets. And, and we always get the money. I mean, I have had, you think in 17 years, this is pretty good. I've only had a couple of sleepless nights. That's pretty good. That's pretty darn good. Where I've had $30,000 to raise in six weeks and you're going, how am I gonna do this? <laughs> Uh, so. Diane, listen, <laughs> I, I know you well enough to know that is, that is no hill for a climber. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you're just laying there going, oh my gosh, six weeks, $30,000, but we always get it. You always do it. We always get it. <laughs> well, you've talked about the trips of honor. Uh, there's also something called the wish of honor. And yes. I know that, you know, when we first established it, it, it actually was called Forever Young Senior Wish Organization. Yes. And now it's obviously, you know, Forever Young Veterans. Uh, but you still do a wish of honor. Tell us about the wish of honor. We don't get as many wishes of honor like we do compared to the trips, but we still get them. Mm -hmm. We One of our, our wishes that went viral went all over the world was when we went for the 75th of Normandy and one of our D-Day vets that lives in Olive Branch, he uh, came, we have a monthly meeting, by the way. Mm -hmm. And so he came to our monthly meeting and he brings this picture of this sexy girl. Okay. But he says to me, before he shows it to me, I had this family befriend me when I was in France. Now he was behind the lines, he wasn't up front, so he actually, was in this one place for three months, which is very unusual, you know. So he, he was there for three months. He developed this relationship with this French girl, mm -hmm. and he truly loved her. He really did. They loved each other. And, but he, he, he said to me, this family befriended me, <laughs> and I would like to find the family. Now, there were younger brothers and sisters. I'd like to find out what happened to the family. Then he shows me this sexy girl. I was like, oh, KT. I was not born yesterday. Diane's dating service. <laughs> I was not born yesterday. I know you're not interested in the family. And he laughed, and he said, well, I would like to know what happened to her. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, maybe we can go there to this little village and... Well, I didn't know how hard all this was going to be because I, I had an acquaintance in Normandy. It just was just difficult. Well, then, because we were going to the 75th, we were working with a, a news station in Paris. Well, they called me because they were honoring another one of our Omaha Beach vets. And so I was talking to her about him. But before she got off the phone, I said, you know, I've got this vet that would like to find this girl. And she goes, oh, a love story. 
And she said, send me all the information you have, the pictures, everything. And I said, okay. So I sent it to her and she called me. This was late at night. She called me back the next day. She'd already found her. Oh, goodness. One phone call. One phone call. She said, France is very different than America. Y'all all move around. We stay in one spot. <laughs> <laughs> and so we didn't tell him. It was very hard for me not to tell him because he was 98 years old. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, oh, my goodness, he's 98. I want to tell him. But we were concerned, and they didn't want him to know because they didn't want it to interfere with the activities of the 75th. Correct. And he'd be thinking about that. So after uh, we had the ceremony, he thought he was, and he was, he was going to this little village. He thought he was going to meet with the mayor and find out what happened to the family. Mm -hmm. So he was on a train and the news reporter said to him, KT, we found her and you're going to be reunited with her very soon. Wow. And the thing is, most World War II veterans are pretty reserved. Pretty stoic. Not him. They started where they left off. <laughs> they were hugging and kissing, and I mean, they were telling each other they loved one another. You can see this story on our website. On the home page, if you'll go down, you can see the love story. It was all recorded. Oh, and, goodness and gracious. So, you know, that's probably the wildest uh, wish that we've <laughs> ever done. Uh, but we did have a 101st Airborne vet in Belgium that got wounded, and he lost his uh, duffel bag. Okay. And he had a Frenchman call him, and this was 70 years later, and said, I found your duffel bag, and I'd like to return it to you, but you have to come here. And he's like, well, I'm not going to be going to Belgium. But he ended up going with us for the 70th, and he, he got his duffel bag returned to him. Very so cool. So that was really special, too. So, and, and they're usually, they're all kinds. We get some really tiny little wishes mm -hmm. that people want, and then we get big things like that. That's, that's fantastic. Uh, now, you also started the Carnival Veterans Celebration, mm -hmm. uh, which is obviously in honor of Veterans Day yes. uh, in, down in the, our wonderful and historic town square. Uh, and I understand that you're celebrating the 14th year yes. of doing that. Tell us a little bit about this event and, uh, you know, and how the town of Carnival is able to partner with you as you all together I honor love, and celebrate. I our love veterans. this event so much. I was just driving down through the town square and I would just see that gazebo and go, oh my gosh, this would be the most perfect place for a ceremony mm -hmm. for our veterans. So they didn't have anything like that. Right. And so I just asked the town, I said, can we please have a veteran ceremony or celebration or something in the square? And they immediately partnered with us. And it's so much fun. You're talking about old fashioned hometown event. It is this one. We have, everything's free. We have hot chocolate and coffee and snacks. We have the Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts. We have the bands from Collierville. I mean, it is a Collierville event. And just to see all the young people mm -hmm. there with our veterans, wow. I, it's one of my favorite events of the year. I love it. That's fantastic. You've done so much. What would be the best career advice that you would give those of our viewers today? You have to do something that you love. That doesn't mean you have to do it for your career. Right. But when you have a passion and you're able to do it even as a hobby, it energizes you and it makes your life better. Mm -hmm. We always take a medical team with us when we go on our trips. Yeah. And our doctor, one of our doctors, he said to me, he goes, my passion is music. And he's in a band. He's an amazing songwriter. He said, I'm a doctor to pay the bills. <laughs> but I do my passion in music. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a perfect example. If We have to find our passion and our love. And we have to find a way to implement that in our lives. Because we'll be happier. And you know what? When we're happier... Everyone else is happier. <laughs> exactly. And our community is happier. Everyone is. <laughs> Everyone wins. <laughs> Love. You know, when we think about what you do, how can the people who are watching this show today help Forever Young? How can, how can they be part of your cause? How can they help fund your cause? 
Well, of course, we always need people to sponsor our veterans mm -hmm. for our trip. And we love to do that. You know, if someone's willing to sponsor one vet and kind of adopt them, mm -hmm. uh, that really makes a difference. And we've had people and businesses, in fact, uh, sponsor a veteran and they would have the vet come to their business. And it, it's really special for the vet when people in the community support them okay. uh, like that. But we also have a monthly meeting. I started this monthly meeting because I, we'd go on a trip and the vets would say, Diane, let's have a reunion. I'm going, I don't have time to do a reunion. So we just decided let's have a monthly meeting and it's just a real patriotic meeting. It's only mm -hmm. one hour. We do it at Germantown Baptist Church. They're so kind to us and they just allow us to come there and uh, it's the facility is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. We meet in the faith building. And so we have coffee and donuts. Uh, it, we meet the third Thursday of every month. And we have coffee and donuts from 10 to 1030. And then the meeting is from 1030 to 1130. So we need people to sponsor donuts and people to uh, come and serve our vets and mm -hmm. just give them attention. So we need volunteers for that. We always need volunteers for uh, different things like our veterans ceremony uh, or our trips, mm -hmm. uh, things like that. There's a lot of ways that people can be involved, but I tell you something that we really do need, especially going to Normandy for the 80th and going on these trips. We need people to help us find these veterans because the more veterans that go on our trips, the more they are honored and the better their lives are. So we need Vietnam vets for Hawaii, DC. We are looking for Normandy vets to go back for the 80th. Now, a lot of people say to me, are they all gone? No, they're not. Believe it or not, there are so many World War II veterans that are still in good health. Fantastic. When we went to Normandy for the 75th, our vets were 93 to 102. And our 102 year old did better than our 93 year olds. Really? So age is just a number. <laughs> So uh, what, here is what we want to do, and we just have to do it, and it's going to be very expensive. So this is where I need people's help. We have got to fly these Normandy vets for the 80th first class. We just have to. And we need people to help us find these guys and to help us send them in a way of honor because they're just too elderly to be in coach now. Absolutely. You know, the stories you've told, you've talked about how Forever Young has helped change lives, has helped change and impact the lives of families in a very positive manner. How has Forever Young changed you? Because I get to hang out with the best people that ever lived <laughs> on the face of the earth. <laughs> they, they are family to me. And I think that's something I've really missed in my life with my dad dying young. And being in the military, we were never with friends and family. Mm -hmm. So I miss that. They are my grandparents, they're my parents, they're my brothers, my uncles. They have us in their homes. We're just a family. They've really changed my life for the better. That's correct. You know, this show is really all about Collierville and Collierville and people who, you know, have been such a big part of this community for so long. Is there one particular Collierville who's really had the greatest impact on your life? Can I give you three real you fast? You can give them, absolutely. <laughs> I'm well, granting you three wishes today. <laughs> thank you. Well, when I first started, Tom Brooks, remember Tom Brooks? Oh, gosh, yes. What a man. Mm -hmm. This is why, I, I almost want to cry. I do, I just get emotional talking about it because being in the military, you don't have the hometown networking that someone goes to school, they stay in their hometown forever. Mm -hmm. But when you go into a place, and my husband got hired by FedEx, this is not where we grew up. But when you have hometown people embrace you and become your mentor, it really, it influenced my life deeply. Tom Brooks was one of those guys. He went to the Rotary in 2006 to speak these people didn't know me. Tom Brooks became my friend. Another thing that happened at that same meeting, you know, when you start a nonprofit, you don't have any money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> K 
Kevin Vaughn, mm -hmm. who did not know me, and you said something when we first started, and you said in starting a nonprofit, the hardest thing is you have to prove you're credible. Mm -hmm. You have to prove to people that you're going to do what you say you're going to do. Kevin Vaughn didn't know me. He wrote me a check for $1,000. Wow, that's fantastic. I can't tell you. I, it almost makes me cry that he was willing to believe in me when he didn't even know me. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm so grateful. So I'm so grateful for Tom Brooks and for Kevin for being there at the very beginning to say, we trust you, we're believing in you, and we're here for you. And who's and number three? Father Jeff and St. Andrew's Episcopal Church. They have been with me from almost the beginning and been so supportive. Father Jeff said something to me once that touched me. He said, I see the healing that's taken place in these men's lives. And we have some women too. I hate to leave them out. Uh, but it's mostly men, of mm -hmm. course. And he said, you know, our church is not going to send anybody to Normandy. We're not going to do that. But you are. And we see the value and the changes in their lives. So we can help you mm -hmm. support them so they can go back to Normandy. And he said, I want to be a part of that healing in their lives. And so here again, we've got another church in Collierville and, and Father Jeff who believe in what we're doing and saying, you, you know what, I don't go to that church. So it's not like, you know, we only support our church members. Right. They care about people. Mm -hmm. And that's why I love Collierville. They care. Mm -hmm. No question. Here we are in this incredible Collierville High School, and I know today is actually the first time yes. you've been in, in, in this building. The new uh, one. <laughs> and it is such, to, 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 to me, uh, a testament to this community coming together for the betterment of, our, of our, our students, our future. What would be the message, Diane, that you would have for the students of Collierville High School? Well, in starting a nonprofit, I would have to say you can't do anything alone. You have to have the right people. Mm -hmm. You have to have the people that support your passion, that feel the same passion, that love what you're doing. But on the other side of that, and this is something I learned <laughs> firsthand, you tend to do everything yourself, or mm -hmm. I would tend to do everything myself. And you can't do that. You have to delegate. You have to have a strong team to support you. Because if you try to do everything yourself, you're going to suffer burnout. Yep. And it's very difficult to come back from it in a timely manner, honestly. And, and that happened to me. I was just working around the clock. and. Um, You've got to depend upon your team. You have to, because if you don't, you can't be the kind of leader you need to be if mm -hmm. you're burned out. Right. Because I found, and this is what happens when you have burnout, easy things become hard, and hard things become impossible. Mm -hmm. And so when you begin to experience that, then you're in trouble. And so that would be my advice, that no matter what you do, don't get caught up in the rut of doing everything yourself. Get the right people around you. Get a strong team. Protect yourself so you can remain a leader. That's so incredibly important. Now, again, you're just getting started as far as I'm <laughs> concerned, girl. You know, <laughs> and, and, and you think about it. You know, you've, you've had an amazing marriage. You raised your children. And then you embarked upon this inspirational and incredible chapter. Years from now, when maybe you finish the third chapter, or maybe the fourth, and you reflect on your career, what would you hope to be your legacy? 
I do kind of feel that my legacy is tied to my dad's. Okay. Because honestly, my father, if you look at my dad, up to this point, he's really been remembered for his struggles, mm -hmm. his alcoholism. But because of my organization, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now if it hadn't been for his struggles. Mm -hmm. And a lot of men and women lost their lives fighting for our country. My dad came home, but he still lost a part of his life over there. He did. And so I think by working with men like him, that he's no longer gonna be remembered for his struggles, but he's gonna be remembered for helping bring healing to America's heroes. And by honoring him, you know, it's brought healing into my life too. Mm -hmm. It has. But when I'm gone, I just hope that people will remember that I truly loved our veterans and I just wanted to make a difference. I wanted to ease their pain because I couldn't ease my dad's pain. What's your a dad's child. name? What's your dad's name? Leland. Leland, Leland Olliger. Okay. And so. And, and here he is, Leland. He has a he has a new legacy. He does have a new legacy, and uh, and and you, your works have brought honor, and 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 and, and I don't want to sound like Field of Dreams, but <laughs> <laughs> ease his pain. But uh, but you have created a, a an opportunity for healing, for hope, yes. and for wishes to come true, and. Uh, uh, and that's something that I know as a failure call your villain and as someone who has watched your work uh, with admiration for so many years, we have great gratitude for what you have done. Thank you. So, well, thank you for joining us and for sharing not only your story, but so many other amazing stories uh, of, of the men who, who served, who sacrificed. And uh, as you said, you know, even those you know, who lost their lives, those who came home, they, they also lost a piece of them. They sure did. And then you've helped them on their healing process. So what amazing testament and legacy you. for you. Uh, you truly are positively impacting these, these men, these individuals, and their families. And, 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 that's, you know, and that's a legacy that will endure. Uh, and you're helping ease that silent suffering. Thank you. And, which I think is just so important. Uh, again, we're grateful to you. We're grateful for what your organization does, for what Forever Young does to highlight these men, to highlight their service. And, uh, and everybody out there now, you know, the 80th is coming up next year. And we need to make sure that Forever Young has a full plane, maybe a full plane of first class if we need to, <laughs> of, 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 the, of these, these men because they need to be honored in the right kind of way. So, and so David, I do want to say I've never taken a salary. That's really important. I do this to honor my dad and my uncles who fought in World War II in Korea. And so if I took a salary the way I was looking at it, it would be taking money away from mm -hmm. them and we can honor more veterans because of it. So I think that's important. Well, I think it's very, very important. So thank you very much. Thank you. The great American, excuse me, the great Indian American author Deepak Chopra once stated, gratitude opens the door to power the wisdom, the creativity of the universe. You open the door through gratitude. As Americans, we all owe an incredible debt of gratitude to the millions of brave souls who have served our country in one or more branches of our military. Their sacrifice, their courage, their willingness to place their very lives in jeopardy, and their steadfast determination to fight for our freedom imposes an obligation on all of us to honor their service with expressions of our gratitude. Diane Haidt understands gratitude. She also saw the need to lift up these amazing men and women. She, and also to give their story a resonant and powerful voice. Diane also understands the power of a wish. She knew that far too many senior veterans felt forgotten and unappreciated. 
how could we demonstrate our gratitude to these veterans in a powerful and significant manner? Basketball Hall of Famer Michael Jordan once stated that some people want something to happen. Some wish it would happen. Others make it happen. Diane Height made it happen. She channeled her passion in creating and building an organization that could transform wishes of hundreds of senior veterans into reality. Her work is a living, breathing manifestation of her gratitude. Her life is a testament to the power of a wish and how one person with a dream can build a life of purpose and significance. May God bless Diane Hyde and everyone associated with the incredible work of Forever Young Veterans. And that is my two cents. Until next time, I'm your host, David Pickler. Thank you for watching Bull TV, where together we deliver solutions for a stronger community. Mm -hmm.